Welcome back to Sports on Tap, part of the NEO Sports Insiders Network, neosportsinsiders.com. Live from Studio J in Brunswick, Ohio, I'm Rob Trout. We have Ed Dick, Sean Duffy, Josh Jeffy here. And we're going to talk a little Cleveland Cavaliers basketball and uh, call it a season, folks. Yep. It's pack it up. Pack it up. Get ready for get ready for Indian spring training and yep. hey the Browns I think uh, training camp starts here yeah. soon. Yeah, we need oh no, we didn't get that. to the NFL draft yet. I forgot. Wow. Now we'll uh, you know the Cavs. <sighs> we've heard it all today. I'm sure all over the radio about uh, the Golden all State over game. everywhere. My goodness. But uh, Sports Center did a breakdown of the game. Yeah, there was there didn't really need to be a breakup of that game. That's for sure. I mean, well, let's put it this way: the players didn't play well. The coaches. Probably didn't coach very well. I mean, it, it's a, a whole bunch of things. But ugly. what are what are your thoughts on uh, the Golden State game? Let's just get that out of the way, and then let's move on past it. Well, uh, for me, uh, it was uh, a Josh te- Jeffy. Everyone, it was a terrible game. Uh, it's one of those games where you kind of chop up the tape uh, and just move on to the next game and and, and forget about it. Um, unfortunately, that this team, the Cavs, being um, you know they have aspirations of being a championship level ball a ball club and this is the first time Golden State has been back on the court that they won the championship Steph Curry him and his mouth guard saying that he was kind of hoping that the um, locker room would still smell like champagne and I guess as a uh, Cavs fan first it's kind of disappointing to have your team come out and really just lay an egg like that and really show no um, sense of anything to be honest with you Um, and and now as we were talking before we went on the air here, overreaction Tuesday uh, is above and beyond uh, what I even think or thought it would be. Um, a lot of local sports uh, radio guys are in their glory today, and uh, the world is coming to an end as far as the Cavs season is, is as it goes. And it's just, you know, it, it's disappointing for one because, for me, the team didn't show up to play at all. Uh, and I kind of – they're kind of – Radio hosts are making kind of a big deal of what Kevin Love said about, Le- you know, LeBron James. Is he taking a shot at LeBron James when he said, you know, everyone needs to take a look at the mirror, and that starts with our leader. And part of me actually uh, agrees with them because um, watching the games this season, I've been kind of uh, um, looking at LeBron and, and w- the way that his defense is being played and, you know, just some of his mannerisms, how he's complaining to the refs a lot. Now, I'm not going to turn this into a blame game. It's, you know, it's collective effort how bad they played. But, um, you know, for LeBron being the leader that he said he was going to be and the aspirations of this team. Now, granted, all with a grain of salt, this is just one game. Uh, but still, in the, these kind of games where they're big, everyone's watching, you need your top players to step up and the big three that we have on this team last night did not step up at all uh, whatsoever. And, again, agreeing with Kevin Love, everyone need, needs to take a look in the mirror, including coaching staff, and, and really just buckle down. Um, and, and Sean and, and us, we were all talking again uh, before the show today. At this point last year, they were like 19 and 20. And then they reeled off all those victories. Um, it just so happens that this particular game, I think, was so hyped and such a circled on the calendar game, and to have a a game played like that is just disappointing and, and really frustrating. Sean Duffy, you I, you look like you're itching at the bit over there. I I just I guess I'm, my question, to everyone is, what's changed since last night? Last night was a bad game. Let's let's call it what it was. It was they laid a turd on Quick on Quick and Loans <laughs> Arena. That's what happened. <laughs> Cavs came out, pooped down their leg, and the Warriors shot 68 percent. Steph Curry is the greatest player that's ever donned basketball shoes he's the best pure shooter in the game yeah 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 what's what's changed is this not, is there are the Cavs not better positioned than they were last year to win a championship yes do we need to tweak some things absolutely but also let's remember it's January 18th mm-hmm. the season doesn't start till playoffs mm-hmm. what do we always what does LeBron always say it doesn't matter what seed I am get me in the playoffs and see what happens I'll take my chances with this team in April and in May and in June Rather than lose my mind over Preach a game, it, brother. Preach it. Oh, over a game that was January 18th. Now, on the flip side, had we blown out Golden State last night, I'd been the first one waving the flag because that means that we've stepped up. But all this means is David Blatt, Tyron Lue, and LeBron James need to get together and figure out what's going to work 
And who needs to play? We don't need to have Anderson Verjao get quality minutes all the time. Get somebody in there that can play. If you need to bring Mo Williams off the bench, best, hello. I don't really think his minutes were that bad yesterday, to be honest. No, they weren't. But I'm and just saying, all. like, is, 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 that, is that the concerted effort to get him I would like you to know see, I mean? you know, to be honest with you right now, I'd like to see more Andy than I do Timothy Mozgov. Well, that, I mean, that dude I is, would agree with that you. That dude is in a place mentally. See, I, I don't think he's completely recovered from whatever yeah. injury he has, and because of that, he's still struggling to get his coordination. And uh, to your point, yeah, if, if, it probably wouldn't hurt to sit him for a couple of weeks, let him get his conditioning back. You're really not going to lose much by having him out and putting Andy Verjao in. Well, I think with him, you know, speaking of of Mozgov, it's so mental with him. Correct. He is such a player that is is so invested and you can see it on his face mm-hmm. every time something doesn't go his way he he basically mentally checks out of the game and uh that that's something that it didn't happen last year and maybe he just uh, um added pressure onto himself but yeah you know speaking of Anderson Verja you know he hasn't played a lot lately let's get him back in the game at, at um, with more minutes, give him a spark. Sean um, would might so he disagree. Blows out his, so he blows out his other Achilles. Well, that's I the, mean, but that's the point yeah, of this. He's not he's not dependent on being a starter. The right. reason why he blows the reason why he blew he's blown his legs out the last couple of years is he's working more than he's playing more minutes than he probably should at the at the intensity that he does it. At. But even if he plays fifteen minutes a game, twenty right. minutes, it's a spark that you know he's a he's a player that can give the Cavs a spark, and he has a really good repertoire. Uh, with LeBron James and and Kyrie Irving and and just just try something new because right now obviously in a big game like that and it's overemphasized because it is a big game something like that's not working. But I think one of the things that is so frustrating about Golden State and when you watch them play is that they're very good. At any point in time, they have five guys that can rebound the ball, that can shoot the ball, that can you know drive the lane. So a guy like Timothy Mozgov or Anders Averjao is outmatched in that in a yeah. certain, in a certain no, that's extent. True. I mean, they're not going against a Tim Duncan or someone who's going to play in the low post. But even Tim Duncan, to a certain extent, can still stretch the floor. Well, he's one of the greatest of all time. That's but, why. But what I'm saying is, is that like you look at a guy like Mozgov or Anders Averjao against a team like the Warriors, you're going to see that those flaws on the open on the, on display more because Draymond Green is just. Dominant or 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 stand that you know Andre Iguodala is you know fantastic. I can't see their whole team. There's yeah. there's nobody that can, but there's nobody that's big that can guard them. That's just unfortunate right now that Golden State has figured out a way to get guys who are tall that can play, that can shoot, that can rebound, and do it all. And that's suffocating to a lot of teams. I mean, hey, here's just what I don't understand. It, and maybe it, I'm looking at it too simply. But for a team like Golden State, in particular, a guy like Steph Curry, who is great off the ball. I mean, he schooled Kyrie Irving last night with backdoor cuts and just moving without the ball. That is the type of guy that you have to be physical with. Mm-hmm. And right. and why and this whole team, to be uh, to be more frank about it, the Golden State Warriors is a team that you have to be physical with. And when you try to, you get kicked out. Well, but that, <laughs> but that's fine. Uh, well, I think what happened with J.R. Smith last night was more on reputation right. than actual play. And that's happened a lot actually this year. He's, but he's gotten a lot of but be foul be call. you know be a little more physical, especially if you're getting your butt kicked as bad as you were. Yeah, be a little more physical. Set set the tone. I mean, a guy like Steph Curry, yeah, he's a great shooter and he shoots from forty feet uh, away from the basket just just well. But if he's going to drive the lane, put body on him. And, and I if just he's going up for a layup. Make him pay for it. Put right. him on his Ex- keister. Exactly. How I, many times did they get layups? I mean, I will say, Golden State they passed really well last yeah. night. Everything was falling. A lot of a lot the of Cavs stuff defense was, ball was a lot of their awful. Stuff, yeah, but a lot of offense but again, was. But you know, when you look at Golden State, I mean, they're a good shooting team. You ha- like you said, you have to be physical with them. We weren't physical at all. We got into a running match with them, and that leads to their strength. Um, a lot of times, and, and like you said, you got to body up. You know, get Steph Curry, make him work. Like Deladova last year, I mean, he really worked Steph Curry, and he struggled a little bit. Clay Thompson last year in the playoffs, he he was terrible. You know, yesterday he put up some points. You know, they have weapons from all over the place, but you have to send a message. You got to be physical, and I feel like the Cavaliers, obviously, yesterday they they were not physical but at all, and they were just, just beat to, all over. Just to bookend my point. 
over the last 11 games, the Cavs have won nine of them. They've lost two games. They lost the, to the Spurs by four points, and that a lot of that had to do with just, I think, being tired at the end of that game. And I think in this blowout loss to the Warriors, granted those are probably the two top teams in the West. You don't want to lose those games. But if you look at the overall picture, the Cavs have won nine of their last 11. Granted, their last game leaves a sour taste in everyone's mouth, but looking forward, I mean, they play Brooklyn, <laughs> you know, tomorrow or, or yeah, tomorrow. Um, you know what I mean? At Brooklyn and Brooklyn's not exactly, a, you know, but they're not, they're not in danger of losing their spot as the best team to come out of the East. No one's not picking the Cavs coming out of the East. They're saying, well, when they get to the finals, they may run into a problem. But yeah, that's assuming that everybody on Golden State's healthy. That's assuming everyone in San Antonio is healthy and they make it through the Western Conference. For all we know, the Thunder may go on a run. For all we know, you never the know. Memphis Grizzlies may go on a run. Clippers. Clippers, yeah. So it's not like it's – the. I just don't like how everyone's so instantly saying the Warriors and the Spurs, it's over. Because if I'm in the Western Conference, I'm like, no, it's not. If I'm the Clippers, bring me the Warriors. I'd rather the Cavaliers lose these games right, right now in exactly. the regular season than, you know, you get to the playoffs and all of a sudden you start struggling. Because Kevin Love <clears throat> has time to figure it out because he has – been a no show for some of these games. You just have to figure it out. You know, get it out of your head. Start fresh. Let's let's put everything behind us and let's come to play. Yeah, I mean the the, the problem is, you know, Love was doing actually pretty well without Kyrie Irving in the lineup. Mm -hmm. You know, because that's when whatever Le, you know LeBron saw the vision as all right. Now we really are going to run everything through Kevin Love. They were able to do that because LeBron was the more ball dominant of the group. Well, now you have Kyrie Irving, who admittedly, you know, he probably. And same with LeBron, you know, when they get to these big games, they they tend to try to play hero ball instead of working the guy, working the ball around and you know getting a good shot. Um, you know, it, I don't see the Cavs are not in any imminent danger, and quite frankly, I don't want to say it, it's not completely overrated losing these games. It doesn't mean anything in my, in my mind though, because how many teams have beat have beaten how many how many finals matches have you seen where the teams either split or one team swept, and then they end up losing the finals. Well, that's what happened. Was, that's what happened last year with the Cavs. Um, they um, they split. split, yeah. And and the game, it was February. I actually went to the game here at the Q, and the Cavs dominated that game. Right. And then they came back, and you know they lost, albeit with you know less of a, of a team, a team. <laughs> less of a team, but still. Um, and and you guys are absolutely right. I mean, who knows what's going to happen in June as far as who's playing hot. Um, injuries. I mean, the Cavs, for all we know, could have injuries, knock on wood, um, that can hurt them. But um, one thing is for sure that, that they do need to get Kevin Love more involved in the offense. And I th I think that's just starting him down. He's shooting the ball terribly. He's in a huge slump um, shooting the ball-wise. Post him up. Yeah, you get know, him run. in a low post. Exactly. And, and yeah, a little inside-out game. Or like yeah, you know. exactly. And, heck, run – Run some pick and roll. I mean, just run an offense. The Cavs are, in my opinion, just as good as the Warriors if they move the ball around. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is times, even a few games ago, uh, during the uh, West Coast trip or the Western trip, um, the six-game roadie, where they would move the ball really fast, and next thing you know, J.R. Smith has an open shot, and he hits it for a three. And they started the Spurs game, actually, really unbelievable moving yep. the ball. They found guys to get open. They were making layups. J.R. was hitting threes, and, and like you said, you just got to move the ball around. It's a lot of standing. And, and one thing last night, you know, like you said, Kyrie Irving, he's ball dominant. I saw a lot of dribbling. I mean, dribbling yep. all over the floor, and he has nice handles. But, I mean, guys are standing watching it because what else are you going to do? You don't know where he's going to go. you got to run some kind of offense. And, you know, at that point in time, you know, Blatt and, and all the coaches need to say, guys, we have to run an offense. But that's on the players. I mean, Yeah, I mean, you can only do so much. I mean, you can't, you can't really – the coach doesn't play the game. You know, and everybody's like, oh, fire Blatt, he's terrible, this and that. I mean, these guys are grown adults. I mean, I'm sure David Blatt yep. didn't say just dribble around the key and then shoot it. You know, they have offensive schemes, and these guys aren't running it. Mm -hmm. it, it just this, That game last night did not fit any of the trend that I've seen over the last 11 games. I mean, at any point in time, it really did feel like they were just not – it was almost like they were not throwing it, but just not really giving into the pressure of the situation, not making, not making that particular molehill into a mountain last night's game. 
Um, but it just it did not it didn't it just I've watched this team and almost every game because when you're on the road in Florida and you can only watch the magic, you download Fox Sports Go and you watch the Cavs because you cannot watch the Magic play basketball. I watched them live and on television. You can't do it. But it's just it just seemed like every other game I've watched, they've been moving the ball, moving the ball, getting open shots, you know, running the floor, doing that. But last night it just seemed like they were trying something maybe that they weren't sure of or weren't sure of the game plan going in because maybe Blatt didn't know what he what combination he wanted but it was just last night is such an outlier to what i've seen well i think it's i think it's a trust issue though i mean it's a trust issue that this the offense and the system that they work or that 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 has worked for some reason when they get in these bigger games against san antonio and and golden state just for whatever reason they just follow the pattern and i and i don't know if that's a function of that your best players just thinking they need to take it upon themselves Mm-hmm. To try to to try to do something that they they may not be capable of doing, or if it, or or if, you know I, I think it that think that's more or less where it lies at, you know and, and if if the coach is seeing that right away then he's got to put a stop to it somehow, I mean call timeout do something I don't, I don't know what that is I mean because obviously you know you're not going to bench LeBron for you know doing that yeah, yeah. I mean it's. I just- I mean, but but again, like like you said, he, LeBron's a professional. He's one of the greatest players to ever play the game. You know, he's got to take it upon himself to set the tone. And, and again, going back to what Kevin Love said, everyone's got to take a look in the mirror, and it starts with the leader. You know, and and one of the images last night that I that I really kind of disapproved of or disapproved of was um, LeBron at, towards the end of the game sitting talking to assistant coach Tyron Lue, completely away. Uh, from the rest of the team and mumbling something didn't look like it was very um, kind to what he was saying just in situations like games last night where everyone's watching and you're getting your butt kicked um, I I feel in my opinion as a leader of the team that kind of stuff can't be seen you need to be doing something totally different because then that just speculates that just throws logs on that fire um, where you see today, Overreaction Tuesday, it's one big dumpster fire right now. People want the coach to go away. Um, All you know. over, you know, one loss. I mean, they still have a good record. And, I, I granted, I understand. You know, listening to some radio hosts, you know, they said, you know, the rest of the season really doesn't matter. You know, like the Brooklyn Nets, they don't matter. Beating teams like that doesn't matter. But if you lose to a Golden State, if you lose to a San Antonio Spurs, those games matter. And, you know, I think that's – that's hilarious to me. I mean, granted, you want to beat Golden State and San Antonio. I mean, they're the top in the West, but you still want to win a lot of games, and you want, and you're going to be in the playoffs. But, I mean, but can you imagine what it's going to be like if the Cavs don't come out and play tomorrow night against Brooklyn? Oh, it's over. I mean, I How already it's going to really be. It, yeah, but what what do they gain over. if they go out and blow them out? Like what? There's no like. I guess that's my point. Like, well, and radio host said if they blow them out, it, great. It, there's it, no game. It doesn't like, matter. Well, they're in a, the, the Cavs are in a no win situation. Exactly. Right? Yes. You know, exactly. you know they. Because they they supposedly can't beat the best of the West, like you said, Josh, it does, and, and you too, Duff. I mean, who knows if these two teams are even gonna get out? We yeah. don't know that. We don't know that. Right. We I don't. mean, there there there's maybe one team that may may give the Cavs trouble in the East. I don't know who it is, but I'm sure there's somebody that could. But well, in the, in well, the, it's in the West, it, you got any one, you got any one of five teams. A first round matchup for Golden State probably not going to be, uh, you know. It's probably going to be a little tougher than a first-round matchup that the Cavs are going to have. That's true. And and to be honest with you, this is no different uh, to me than how the Cavs were in LeBron's first go-around. Um, and, and maybe going back, maybe this is kind of a bad example, but how Michael Jordan and his Bulls teams were with the Pistons. Everyone thought, nah, they're never going to be anything unless they beat the Pistons. Well, same thing is going on right now. The Cavs are not going to be anything unless they can prove that they can beat those teams out west the spurs and the warriors and the only way that that's going to happen is if it's in the nba finals and they win a championship so uh even more pressure is on them to do that but until they do do that you're going to have this every time these teams play and the Cavs lose well and you know the Cavs on the west coast what did they go six and one or five and one five and one and i mean one. and a lot of people were not you know, they were like, well, they lost to the Spurs, though. You know, they didn't Spurs care. haven't lost at home. So you're telling me yeah. since the Cavs beat them. <laughs> yeah. Since Kyrie yeah. Irving dropped 55 or 57. 57, them, yep. You know, that's the last and time I mean, the Spurs lost in the regular season. Really, everyone just needs to calm down. You know, granted, it stinks they lost. 
No one, no one recognizes the fact they beat the Thunder. You know what I mean? <laughs> Who's one of the hottest teams in in, in the Western Conference? Yeah. I mean, let's be honest. They well, they, and, and they beat. I mean, they beat uh, Dallas. They beat Houston. Right. I mean, it's not Houston easy. Houston has a problem. Well, it's not wow. easy though to go in those places if you're a team from the East and, and go to the what do they call right. it? the Texas the Tex- Triangle? Texas Triangle. It's not easy to do that. Um, and, and and they did it, and then they had to come back home, and they were just flat a game against the Warriors, and now they have to correct themselves, which I'm very confident that they will. No problem there. Well, one last question. You know, we'll get off of you know them losing that game, but how about do the Cavs need to make any trades? We everybody was talking no. about the Cavs no. making a trade for maybe uh you know like uh, Markeep Morris or a player of that caliber that comes in and maybe plays a little more defense because everybody's talking about defensively this team. You know, LeBron I thought was a really good defender, but lately it seems like he's not locking down players. Shumpert is solid. He's a good defender, but do they need to go out and get another guy to play some defense on this team or to have a little grit, have a little – Defense is effort. Yeah. You know, and obviously LeBron doesn't feel the need to have to put the effort in right now. Now – that could totally he change. He blocked that one shot last night that I remember. He tracked the guy down, but, you know, that was – After a, after after a, a four, turnover. That was after 40. You know, they were down 47. They just turned the ball but, over. Well, and here's the thing, though. I mean, regular season, yeah, you want your defense to be tight and whatnot. But we saw the type of defense the Cavs can play last year in the playoffs. So, I, I'm not worried about it at all. And so, you, no it, trades should no. happen. No, I don't think so. I mean, unless you want to use your trade exception for something, because you, well, you have that you have that sitting out there. But well, I I just think only teams that are struggling, or maybe even bad teams, make trades during the middle of the season. And I don't think the Cavs are are at any point where they need to do anything drastic. Uh, nothing, nothing to the extent of what they did last year. No, right. That's for sure. <laughs> exactly. But I, but I also go back and say, even if they do get somebody, even if they go out and get a trade, it's up to David Blatt to use him, correct, use that player correctly. I mean, I still go back to how much money are we paying Mo Williams, and why isn't he? Why is he's Matthew, injured right now? He's injured. Yeah, he he had to have a he, second opinion, I believe, on his hand, wasn't it? Well, he he did have some issues with his thumb. The past few games, he's been dealing with. Um, personal family issues uh there's also been some rumors that he's just been f- flat out mad because matthew Della Vidova. exactly but but here's my thing you're gonna hold that against Delhi though i think i'm, he, not, going I think to. He I'm not gonna hold it against him but if you're you no, brought he's not mo- playing bad no but he's not i mean you look at mo williams ability to score and matthew Della Vidova's ability to score and i would take mo williams but well, but, sco- that. but, 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 score, I mean? like, but scoring on this team is is not the problem scoring is definitely not the problem it's defense uh, assist moving the ball that's been the problem and a- as much as I like Mo Williams his ability to score the ball Delhi gives the Cavs a better opportunity to move the ball and play better defense Mo Williams is a terrible defender and Mo, well Mo Williams knew coming well, in so is J.R. Smith so should we start Mo Williams over J.R. Smith J.R. Smith is actually pretty good if he wants to be, yeah, that's my point. I, Mo Williams will go out there and give it, give it his all every night. And but it, but if, if Mo scorer. Williams is going to be pissed the fact that he's not playing, he's not going to put any effort. So why play him? I mean, you come to a team like this, and I think Rob was starting to talk, say this. If you come to a team, he knew going in signing that he would have to make sacrifices. Anyone coming to the Cavs now would have to make sacrifices. Now going back to the trade, I saw one name. That could be available. It's kind of a big name. If it could, Kobe Bryant, Stefan <laughs> Marbury. <laughs> no, if by some chance Baron the, Davis. the Cavs are able <laughs> to pull to pull a deal to get like a Rudy Gay, ah. you know that is someone that can match up. Um, looking into the playoffs against a team like the Warriors or What's the he Spurs. On Sacramento, right? He now? is on Sacramento. He's just a big. A uh, big guy, solid defender, can score the ball. On this team, he wouldn't really have to do that. But he's a a, a nice, taller defender uh, that can play against like a Clay Thompson or a, a Kawhi Leonard, something along those lines. Not to say that it, it's going to be happening. I don't even know what the Kings are going to want for that. It's probably way out of the Cavs price range. You're going to have to blow something up. But that was a name that I saw today that is kind of intriguing uh, if he is indeed available. But... Um, as far as making a trade, I don't think the Cavs should or will do. Who knows? I mean, it's 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 up to David Griffin. He's the one that making the decisions with Dan Gilbert and it's, LeBron. Yeah, and LeBron. But I mean, 
I think LeBron needs to do what he did last year. Go down to Miami, get your head right, come back. Take a couple be, weeks off. Be the leader and, and and send this thing home. And that's, I mean, I wouldn't be shocked if we heard about it. But you know what would happen. National media would explode with, is this the end of David Blatt? Is Cleveland burning itself into the ground? Or is LeBron, this is his last year in Cleveland because LeBron's a free agent after the year? Did yeah, LeBron right. go to Miami to talk to Johnny Manziel? Oh, wait, we're talking, oh, wait, Johnny Manziel. Billy? John, Johnny Manziel's in Texas, bro. Yeah, I know. But do you know what? Johnny Manziel has to be not, in They're not doing business anymore. Yeah, I they know. don't do business no more. Fine. I know, but Johnny Manziel wants to do business with LeBron again. Cut, son. Sorry, I had to bring Johnny Manziel up. We didn't talk about him the whole segment. What? It's crazy. Yeah, you know, it was such a great segment. <laughs> I know. All right. When we come back, we're going to talk Cleveland Browns football. Hugh Jackson, the new head coach of the Cleveland Browns, and much more coming up. We're Sports on Tap, part of the NEO Sports Insiders Network. For the best coverage of Cavs, Indians, and Browns, check out NEOSportsInsiders.com. NEOSportsInsiders.com brings you breaking news, opinions, and video from all things related to your favorite Cleveland sports teams. Like us on Facebook and follow at NEOSportsInsiders on Twitter for live updates from all the games. NEOSportsInsiders.com, bringing you the best in Northeast Ohio sports coverage. Join Sports on Tap the first Thursday of every month at Z's Cream and Bean, 2706 Boston Road in Hinkley, Ohio, as Sports on Tap talks local Ohio high school sports, Cleveland sports, and national sports topics. It's all happening at Z's Cream and Bean the first Thursday of every month starting at 7.30 p.m. Join us. 